So now that we've looked at identifying ranges, let's talk about some of the properties or some of the descriptive characteristics of a range. Um, our range can have an address. So we can have, instead of using the dot select method, we can use the dot address property. And this just returns the address. So we would expect this to come back with uh, C2 to E10. Okay, how can we test this? We can stick it in a message box. And so our message box should now return this range of ranges address, which it's doing, C2 through E10, colon E10. So this might be useful to us a little later on, and we'll look at some practical applications that use uh, the, the dot address property. We also have a dot cells property uh, that would describe the third cell in this range. We're going to select it. So if our range is C2 to C10, and we picked the third cell, we would expect it to be right there. And let's see when we select it what happens. Okay, it's picking the, the right one. So this um, may be useful to us if we have a block of ranges for picking out a particular cell uh, that we can then take an action on. Right now we're just simply selecting it. We can also specify cells by row and column instead of just a single one. So this is a single column that we were working on here. If we turn this into a group or a range of ranges, uh, then we can pick uh, row three, column, Two. So now, if this is what we've selected, we would expect row three, column two, we would expect this cell D4 to be highlighted. Let's see. And it is. So cells uh, is a probably a lesser used property, but it's one that's available to us. We can also pick a range, and we can use the entire column property. So it's going to find cell C2, and then select the entire column. So it should be all of C. And that's working correctly. We can also select an entire row. So we have those two properties available to us. We also have the current region property. And current region will find the selected range, in this case C2. And then based on the, the, the selected range or the beginning range, it'll find the current region. And the current region is defined uh, as a, a ranges that are bound by blank rows and blank columns. So it would, it will, the region will extend all the way to here where there's an entire blank column and all the way to here where there's an entire blank row. So if I had some blanks in the middle of my data, it's still not impacted because it has to be an entire blank column or an entire blank row for a current region. So let's see if it correctly selects this. We would expect everything from A1 to E10 to be selected. And it is. So again, an individual blank cell doesn't make a difference. It's looking for a blank column and a blank row to stop the current region. We can put some of these properties together so we can look for the current region address and return that in a message box. A1 to E10, which is exactly what we expected. If I look in Excel, I can name a range. So I can highlight a group of cells and then I can give it a name. 
and now I can refer to it by its name. So I can do something similar in VBA. In VBA, I'm going to pick my range of ranges or pick my range. So it's going to go from B2 through E10. So all the scores are going to be selected. And I'm going to use the dot name property to name that range test scores. And now when I do that, I can select it. So this might be a, a way that you can uh, name a range and then refer to it by the name instead of the address. And I can do that by specifying the name instead of the address. Here I'm using the dot select it. So if I'm down here somewhere and I run this, I would expect my group to be selected and it is. When looking at ranges in Excel, I can put my cursor on B1. And if I wanted to go all the way to the bottom of that row, I could press the end key and the down arrow and it'll take me down. And then I could press the end key and the right arrow and it'll take me to the far corner. So it's a way to move, um, to move around in the data. Now, if I have a blank, I can go down, but it takes me to the blank cell. So I have to make sure that the data is contiguous if I'm going to do something like this. But it's frequently useful uh, to be able to identify the top left. You can usually pick that out and specify that. But finding the bottom right may be more fluid. It may not always be exactly defined. So maybe I can use the end property. And to use the end property, I can specify a range of ranges. And I know uh, I know I have four scores A B C and or uh, B C D and E are my columns, so I can go to that E column. But I don't know how many students I have, so I'm going to go to E1 and then I'm going to end, and I'm going to Excel down. So it's the same thing as pressing the end key and the down arrow. So now I'm selecting a range of ranges. B2 is my top left. My bottom right, this piece right here, says go to E1, press the end key and the down arrow and should take me down there. So hopefully all of this is selected. And it is. But again, I can't have a blank in my data. It has to be contiguous data. If I'm not sure how wide or how tall my data is, I can specify the same starting point. And then go down and to the right. So now my range of ranges says top left is B2. And the bottom right is B2 press the end key and go down. So that takes me to here. And then press the end key and go to the right. And that takes me to here. So again, assuming there's no blanks in this data. It should select that whole group and it does. The other approach I can take uh, instead of starting at the top left, and going right or down to get to the bottom, I can start down here somewhere and go up. So in this case, if I started at B2 and I went to the right, it'll stop because there's a blank cell. So these blank cells will cause problems with identifying. So what I can do is go outside of the range. So there's not a B16. So I'll come down to B16 
and then I'll press the end and up and it'll find the bottom. I can also come out to I-10 and end and left and it'll find the other corner. So again, starting at the bottom and working up uh, is a pretty good way to be able to find the last row uh, if we need, need to do that, which frequently we do.